I slowly opened the door. Kingdom Hearts? You freaking jerk! You're in every ending, and you always make me mad! Why? Oh, man. Oh, dang. Done did it again. How's it going, everybody? Hoodlumut here, back with some more Chaos Head, Noah. And uh, last time, we met God! Or someone who at least claims to be God. Uh, the apparent true committee of 300 who said that they could uh, give us cheat codes to life if we destroy Noah 2 for them. Uh, which is what uh, Senna and uh, Takumi set out to do against Senna's wishes, Hatano's wishes. Um, I think they're dumb. I think it's an obvious trap. Pretty, pretty much so. Uh, it's probably Sua click clacking behind the screen, just messing with us, because, you know, whatever. Um, prior to all that, though, was pretty lewd stuff going on, to the point that I couldn't read a particular sentence being said, because, no. Uh, but aside from that, we thought we were, like, entrapped in rubble, and we weren't. Or at least not as bad as we thought we were, to the point that we thought we would die. Um, so... We were saved then by, uh, Hatano, who, uh, then, you know, did all this stuff with us now, and then we had sent a question, um, and then, uh, Hatano saved us from that rubble, and, uh, led us up to the point that I just got done talking about, um, in which, uh, Senna kind of had it out with them, and was like, how can we trust you, how do we know that you're not the one doing this to us, and all this other bullcrap, okay, so... Basically, now, we're heading off to destroy Noah 2, although the game has uh, set us uh, in the, well, I, I don't, you wouldn't say the perspective, but in the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, area of uh, Hatano, so we can see what he's thinking and seeing and all that, so um, that's where we're at now, so without further ado, let's just get back into this, shall we? Hatano Issei watched his daughter and Nishijo Takami leave until they fell out of sight. And once they did, he took a seat in the middle of the rubble. I wish to talk with God for just a moment longer. As he became the last remaining person in the room, he said those words into the air. His daughter Senna had looked like she had something to tell him, but instead she had simply thrown a sharp glare his way, only to click her tongue, turn her head away, and leave without saying a word. Nothing had escaped Hatano's lips, either. Committee of 300, are you still watching me? He faced the silent, pitch-black monitor and called out to it. There was no response for a while, leaving Hatano to continue staring emptily at the monitor. Eventually, the screen roared back to life, displaying the chat log from before. Yes. It responded with why, meaning yes. Why Senna and Nishijo Takami? With Shibuya in its current state, they were the gigalomaniacs we had the highest likelihood of establishing contact with. That is all. There is no ulterior motive beyond that. As the Committee of 300, how... Precisely, would you define this world? A game? Grounds for experiment? A farm for livestock? The Worldwide Human Domestication Project is merely the delusion born of a certain selection of conspiracy theorists. Yo, that's crazy! You're telling me conspiracy theorists create the world, dude? They friggin' created the entire world, dude? Huh? As was stated before, we do not directly intervene in your world. The Worldwide Human Domestication Project. A term that would find its way into any discussion about the famous Committee of 300 conspiracy. Those who know of the conspiracy speculate that the Committee of 300 means to establish a one-world government to unify the world. And once they do, 
They shall guide the world through the creation of a new world order. Dude! That is too freaking real, dude! Whoa! Bro. This game... This series, the Psy Adventure series, dude. Oh my gosh. This is crazy. <laughs> dude, that is straight up like what is happening? Trying to create a one world government, a one world religion, you know, like one world currency. Like if you've been if you if you pay attention at all, like at all and aren't entirely brainwashed. You know what I'm talking about. You see it, right? Like, I'm not crazy. Like, that literally is... Oh, my gosh. This is insane that they get to... T well, I was going to say that they get to talk about this because I'm like, how is this not shut down? But I guess, like, one of the best ways to hide is to hide in plain sight. So it's like, you know, maybe let them talk about this stuff. I don't know. Maybe you guys don't agree with me on that, but that totally... Wow, that, that feels so real. Holy crap. And then in the New World Order type of thing, that's like what the WHO is. Anyway. The <laughs> Look up the WHO organization, dude. They're pretty nefarious, brother. Aside from a selection of chosen people, all of humanity will be subjected to semi-permanent brainwashing applied via a silent weapon, turning them into mindless slaves. Just like livestock, their flesh, milk, labor, children, and very lives shall endlessly be stolen away by the elite. Dude! Come on, man. <laughs> Come on, man. Yeah, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, huh? You know? Like, come on, dude. Also, like, all of humanity will be subjected to a semi-permanent brainwashing? What does semi-permanent mean? What does that mean? Why And why semi-permanent? Bro. Aside from a selection of chosen people, dude. Are the chosen people just the committee of 300? Holy crap. Okay. This is crazy. This is so freaking... Okay. Should this be realized, it would perhaps be humanity's cruelest, most systematic utopia of all. Unknowingly having their wills stole from them and being automated as livestock, the remains of humanity would be constantly exploited, all while continuing to live their lives in blissful ignorance. Dude, this is literally Huxley. This is what uh, Audouis Huxley talks about. It's like uh, Brave New World. I mean, it's kind of a common talking point nowadays, but the, the whole Huxley versus Orwell. But in case one of you doesn't know, okay, Huxley was the mentor to um, to 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 uh, uh, George Orwell. And uh, both of them had ideas of uh, what they thought the world would eventually devolve into, like via like how the government would try to overtake the people. And so Orwell had the idea, which he talks about in 1984. Uh, you may have heard the term Big Brother, right? Always looking over your shoulder. He was the one that I believe coined that term and kind of talked about that term. And so his whole idea was that it would be like a fascist kind of um, oppressive authoritarian regime that would ban books and uh, limit uh, um, uh, information from civilians so that they can't, you know, know stuff and would basically force them to do whatever they, you know, wanted at any given moment, you know, you're going to be in this job and you're going to be in this type of a job and, you know, limited freedom uh, type of a mentality, basically communism, okay, like true communism. Um, whereas Huxley thought that that was rather naive because what he believed would happen was that the government and the powers that be would create a system uh, in society uh, where people are just inundated with decadence and entertainment, um, so much so that they no longer care about things that should matter to them in the world, such as politics and, uh, you know, petty moralities and all these different things, that type of thing. As long as they got their trickle of dopamine, right, as long as they got more TV shows coming out and they got more, you know, uh, 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 you know, uh, the, the food that they want so they could, you know, engorge themselves in gluttony and stuff like that. Um, he believed that the government would take over by basically making people blissfully ignorant, willingly so, um, for the sake of basically doing 
doing whatever they they ask them to do just so that they could get a little bit of safety a little bit of more entertainment a little bit of whatever right um and it turns out <laughs> if you've been paying attention that both of them were kind of equally right they just have been you've been seeing a little bit of a mixture of both of those things coming i think huxley was first correct though which then allowed the way for Orwell's reality to kind of come into existence, right? And, and that's really, I think, the kind of gist of what Huxley was saying is, is the only way yours can happen is if mine happens, right? If my uh, theory happens first. Um, so that's, that's kind of like what this is talking about, you know, constantly exploited all while continuing to live their lives in blissful ignorance. It's like, dang, man, that's so freaking real. So uh, anyway, yeah, but uh, Brave New World was Huxley's book where he kind of talks about it's, it's a story based off of his theory of how the government would take over. And uh, 1984 was Orwell's version. So anyway, just a little bit of uh, literature uh, history there for you, I suppose. As they would have no way to know of their exploitation, they would never raise any objections nor rebel against their circumstances. Yeah, see, like Huxley, that's basically the same premise. Even if the worldwide human domestication project is a mere delusion, silent weapons are very much real. Noah too exists as irrefutable evidence of this fact. That is related to our current error. The error born from you, Nishijo Takami, and Norosei Genichi. We are putting our best efforts into fixing this error. So the world will once again be placed under your order? One where you will continue to exploit the general populace as mindless slaves? As Hatano spoke, a horrifying possibility stemming from his own words came to him, and his brow furrowed. Has the worldwide human domestication project already been completed? Oh, interesting. You produce an interesting concept, but that is not quite the right way to put it. To correctly express it from the viewpoint of God, you were all already livestock from the moment of this world's inception. Nevertheless, this is nothing but a hypothetical. Interesting. So this is again kind of the idea that I was talking about last episode, right? Where I was saying... It's like we're all kind of pawns in this game, except from, you know, my perspective, talking from like a Christian perspective. Uh, we're not pawns, but kings and queens, but nonetheless part of this game uh, of a bigger, you know, kind of, uh, you know, game going on that's bigger than ourselves, right? Um, but, you know, to say livestock is rather derogatory. I wouldn't use that terminology, but um, that's interesting. Okay. Answer my original question. As the Committee of 300, how, precisely, would you define this world? A game? Grounds for experiment? A farm for livestock? Well, they already said livestock, though, right? I mean, that's kind of, you know. In response to Hatano, symbols, whatever, uh, that t tag, fell silent. The time has come. The time? The time for what? The Committee of 300 must remain an entity of shadow, one that is spoken of only in conspiracy theories. Anyone who knows too much must be disposed of. Much like Inohana and Kuramochi before you, none of you are exceptions to this rule. Interesting. So yeah, see, kind of like what I was saying too, just a little bit earlier, where it's like, it's okay to have conspiracy theories because... You know, if people have all these conspiracy theories, you know, it makes like no one will actually look into it. They'll just think, ah, that's just whatever. Right. So it's hiding in plain sight, basically letting certain people talk about it, but not everyone talk about it. Right. It's kind of interesting. What do you mean by. Oh, no. Arsena and Nishijo Takami. You three became pawns the moment we established contact. Wait, I couldn't read the rest of that, huh? Wait! What'd that say? Can I check it out? Oh, okay, yeah, I can. Pawns fulfill the roles they are given, and nothing more. That is our rule. Yo, what the frick? Huh? 
the monitor abruptly went black. It was no different than a death sentence. Senna! Oh no, he's chasing him. Oh no, is he gonna get there in time? Clamping his teeth down on his lip, Hatano frantically stood up. If he left now, perhaps he would still be able to catch the two of them before they reached Shibuya Station. Yeah, he's gonna run into- they're gonna get bipped by frickin' Sua, dude. He had to tell them that it was a trap. He did not want to let his daughter die. After killing his wife and second daughter, she was the only family he had left. No matter how much hatred she held for him, all he wanted was for her to live. For this reason, Hatano ran. And yet, in the end, he was not able to escape the Nozomi Technology Building. Interesting, I wonder why. So does that mean he won't be able to jump in front of the bullet for her then? Oh! For before he could, the sound of an explosion, combined with a furious vibration, ripped through the building. It was not collapsing due to the earthquake, however. The sound alone told him it was by the hand of man. But knowing this did not change his fate. The ground beneath his feet collapsed, and, as if the lid had been lifted off the cauldron of hell itself, the earth opened wide and swallowed up the insignificant existence that was Hatano Issei. <gasps> Did they get rid of him? They got rid of him so he couldn't stop them from stopping Noah too. Oh my gosh, no! Oh frick, that means he's not gonna be able to jump in front of the bullet. Does that mean Senna's actually gonna get shot? Oh no. Going on a walk through Shibuya finally helped things sink in. I finally came to terms with just how horrifying the earthquake that hit the city truly was. Not a single trace of the once dazzling city remained. The city was... dead. Shibuya was now a city of death. Countless unmoving bodies littered the streets, some lying alone, others piled on top of one another. Various sections of the main road were deeply stained with pools of blood. Nothing was alive. Everyone was dead. Everyone. Hatano-san had said something earlier about the casualties being in the thousands and the sole cause of all this suffering was Noah too. This wasn't a natural disaster. It wasn't even any kind of disaster at all. This was an atrocity, a massacre. Senna, who was just a few steps ahead of me, had an intense look of sorrow on her face. Hatano-san hadn't come with us, we had left him behind at the Nozomi Technology Building. They were father and daughter, apparently, but they didn't really act like it. It felt like Senna had some sort of one-sided, intense hatred toward her father. They had mentioned Senna's mother and younger sister during their conversation. What had happened between the two of them? Whatever it was, it must have been what had led to Senna's heart and mind being broken. Despite me wondering that, I didn't plan on asking for some detailed account of what happened or anything. Not that I knew how to in the first place. Besides, our number one priority at the moment was obtaining the cheat code. Once we had that, I wouldn't need Senna to protect me anymore. I'd be able to live on my own. I bet Senna doesn't really buy it. I bet she's just trying to see if she can maybe use the cheat code to destroy them too, maybe? I don't know. I feel like Sen is too smart and thinks too much to just, like, fall for the trap of, like, oh, a cheat code? Sure thing! Because she was already questioning the crap out of them, right? So, I think she did feel like, oh, man, maybe I can get my mother and sister back, but I have a feeling she's not going to actually trust them. I don't know. We'll find out. Suddenly, a rumbling sound came from behind me. Thinking it was another earthquake, I immediately got down on my hands and knees but the ground wasn't what was shaking. I slowly, 
and cautiously looked behind me, toward where the Nozomi main office we were just in should have been standing. Smoke was pouring into the sky. It looked like the end result of an erupting volcano, and the building that should have been there wasn't there. Oh crap! Had it collapsed? But... Hatano-san was still in there. Oh! No... A small whimper escaped Senna's lips. She looked up at the smoke filling the sky in a daze. Dad. After a moment, she noticed my gaze and quickly turned the other way. However, her shoulders continued to tremble. Aw. Dang it. If I knew this would happen, I would have killed him myself. If I had just killed him, then I... <laughs> well, we can just bring him back, too. Once we got our hands on the cheat code... We could do that. There was no reason we couldn't. As long as we believed what that tag had said. <laughs> Bringing someone back to life just to kill them? <laughs> That's counterintuitive. <laughs> Senna laughed to herself but her voice was muffled by her tears. I didn't really know what to say to her, so I just hung my head. Senna fought back her tears for a while, but eventually, as if she'd made up her mind about something, she started moving forward once again. And now, not a single tear remained on her face. I hurriedly followed after her, Dude, I love that she, like, cares about her dad even though she wants to kill him. It's so, like, it's so, oh, it's so, it's, I want to say wholesome, but it's not. It's like, because she doesn't really want to kill him, right? She's just super angry and hurt, you know? Oh, man. Underground Shibuya Station was home to both the Hanzaman Line and the newly constructed Fukutoshin Line, which had a far more complicated structure to it. There was also a... Ginza Line platform located two floors above ground, but it was still treated as a subway service. Ask pretty much anyone, and they'd tell you the place was pretty much a dungeon. And not only that, but the earthquake had caused all stairways leading underground to collapse, and now they were all buried in rubble. Senna had been able to use her D-sword to blast away the rubble and clear a path for us, so it hadn't posed much of a problem. But due to the lack of proper lighting, finding the right coin locker had been taking a lot more time than expected. And if that weren't enough, the air filtration system had stopped, leaving the air disgusting and filled with dust. My coughing refused to stop, to the point where I felt like I was going to die and the stench of death wafting off of the scattered corpses didn't help either. Is this it? Senna had finally located the coin locker, which was somehow standing tall with no signs of any noticeable damage. To our astonishment and subsequent relief, the locker still had power running to it something that was made clear by the bright glow of the IC card reader. Please make a selection was displayed on the screen. Retrieve and deposit were the only two buttons available. Could there really be a cheat code in such an ordinary locker? 
The locker had been there since before the earthquake. A whole bunch of customers would have passed through here before us. On a normal day, no one would have paid it any mind. Just how many people actually used lockers like these in the first place? I couldn't imagine there'd be that many. Upon closer inspection, it occurred to me that almost all of the other lockers were buried in rubble. Yeah, see, dude, this is a delusion, bro. And behind that single closed door was something beyond imagination. Urban legends like that had been floating around for decades. It wasn't especially strange or anything like that. It was fairly grounded in reality, actually. A small container that you could find very easily throughout your ordinary life, housing something extraordinary. That was the idea behind it. When I pushed the retrieve button, a message popped up saying, please scan your card. What we find in there, will it give us hope or despair? Senna dug out her IC card from her pocket and slowly approached the screen. It's gonna be like a head or something in there, dude. With an electronic beep, the sound of a lock releasing came from the locker. The sound echoed ominously throughout the dead, silent underground. <laughs> Senna and I stood anchored to the spot, and then... We both checked our surroundings. We'd at last come face to face with the cheat code. What form it'd take, neither of us knew. It said, though, that uh, whoever the, the person writing that was, uh, they said that they'd have to destroy the thing to get the cheat code, which is, that just means we're going to have to kill something. I can almost guarantee it. Please don't let it be something gross. Or anything gory. Personally, if I had the choice, I'd, uh, I'd want it to be a Sataton figure. Yeah, that'd be the best possible outcome. Okay, well, so, see, they're either trying to trick me or it's not actually going to be anything gross or gory then, so I don't know. Senna wiped off the sweat beating on her brow. It was number 1009, wasn't it? Oh boy. The locker we were looking at was the second from the left, and third from the top. The door was fairly big, and it had number 1009 written on it. The locker was ever so slightly ajar. All we could see inside that slight gap was uncertain, unending darkness. Senna and I stared at the locker, frozen in place. You open it. Even though she didn't say it out loud, I could feel Senna telling me that. Granted, I was doing the same thing, so we were both equally cowardly. Come on, you do it, I told her inside my head. I thought about letting a game of rock, paper, scissors make the decision for us, but it wasn't the time to mess around like that. S Senna, you should open it was what I was going to say, but I was interrupted. Open it, Nishijo. Senna took a step back and readied her sword. I'll stand guard, just in case. <laughs> That's a cop-out. <laughs> well, what the heck do you mean, just in case? Hurry up. I still felt like she was going to stick me with the tip of her sword any second now. My throat went dry from the anxiety, but my recently unearthed hope resurfaced once again. If I surpass this trial, I can become a hero. With this adage etched upon my heart, I summoned all of my remaining courage. I placed my hand on the half-open locker door. Do, do I open it? Yeah, she keeps saying it. Just open it. Yeah. I slowly opened the door. Kingdom Hearts? It opened easier than I expected. And inside, I found 
The door to darkness. Ew! What is that? Gross! What the frick? Looks like a, like a knapsack with like... It was probably body parts in there or something. Senna and I peeked into the locker at a loss for words. A white bundle of cloth? It was bigger than I expected. But right when I reached out to touch it... Ah! It's a baby! Oh my gosh! Is that her sister? It's a baby! Either that or it's a delusion, it's a fake. Is it gonna be mummy baby? Dude, remember it was a corpse baby before. That the mom thought was a real baby, but they were doing experiments on her, dude. They were making her see a delusion, and it was a corpse baby. It was her corpse baby. Dude, that better not be the case. That's gonna be so screwed, dude. What? I pulled my hand back in a panic at the sudden voice. It, it's... No way. It's... A baby? A live baby had been in the locker? I mean, it'd been decades since then, but abandoned children being found in coin lockers had been a fairly large social issue at one point. But for it to be happening now? Wait, really? That was a thing that happened? Decades ago? What the frick? They used to put babies in lockers? What the frick? Wait, that didn't matter right now. Where was the cheat code? Dude, they're gonna have to kill the baby. They're gonna have to kill the baby. They're gonna have to kill- They said you'd have to destroy it. I told you it was gonna be something that- That was- I knew it. I freaking knew they were- It was gonna be something. I didn't expect a baby, but I'm like, it's gonna be something that's alive. They're gonna have to kill something. I knew it, because it said destroy. That's how I knew. Frick! I double-checked the locker number. It was unmistakably number 1009. So that must have meant- Oh, baby! Senna gently picked it up as it continued to wail, handling it like a fragile object that would fall to pieces if she let go of it. The baby's cries grew louder and louder. Senna grimaced as her body stiffened and locked in place. She looked at me with pleading eyes. Oh! Nishi Joe! Help! What am I supposed to do? Why ask me? I, uh... I think you should let it suck on your breasts. Yeah. Dude, freak uh, Screw you! Screw you! Freaking mad right now, dude. There's a baby here, dude! Come on, bro. Burn in hell. Yeah, you tell him! Tell him! Get him! <laughs> Her glare pierced through me. Had she overheard my delusion just now? That baby... is probably the ch cheat code. I mean, if we thought about what they said... Yeah, they're gonna have to kill it if they want the cheat code. Oh no. Oh no. If the baby was the cheat code, it wouldn't activate unless we destroyed it destroy it. In other words, kill it. I went silent, and Senna glared daggers at me. She shielded the baby with her arms. Yeah, Senna! Yeah, let your little motherly instincts kick in, yo. We can't. There's no way in heck we can do that. Yeah, you tell him, baby, let's go. The moral compass. Let's go. Ah, uh, dude, Senna making me like her. They survived the earthquake all alone in a dark, cramped place like this. B but it's the cheat code. It only appeared h here after the earthquake. It isn't hu human. It, it just looks like one. Dude, are they giving... Are they freaking making an abortion argument right now? <laughs> What the frick? In my Chaos Head video game? 
In my anime visual novel, they're making an abortion argument. Are you kidding me right now? What the frick? Huh? Oh my gosh. <laughs> this is crazy. What the frick? Okay, I'm here for it though. Like, but dang, I wasn't expecting this, dude. That's only if you believe what the self-proclaimed Committee of 300 said. What if they were lying? What if this baby had been left here originally, and those people just embedded the cheat code into them? I cowered at Senna's horrifically menacing look. Even so, I frantically shot back my rebuttal without looking her in the eye. But, but it's not like we have much of a choice here. If we don't destroy it, the cheat won't... If I lost to Senna here, I'd end up losing the cheat code, and I'd stay an otaku freak for the rest of my miserable life. Just feel them, Nishijo! Feel the warmth coming off of them! Are you really capable of killing a small child? Of course I can't! I'm completely harmless! That's why you need to do it, Senna! But I couldn't actually say any of that. But she heard you, right? Like... Because she can read your thoughts. Senna, you're c c contradicting yourself. You were so m motivated before we got here. The the world is all just an electronic device, right? So so that means that that the baby is just a shell, a doll. Bro, this is crazy, dude. Like, obviously, it's not a one-for-one -one abortion argument here because, you know, this, it's different. It's a little different there because this is like an actual baby in your hand, right? So the arguments kind of become a little bit different. But still, it's like it's making the same types of arguments, right? He's the pro-choice argument and he's saying, like, it's not really a person, right, in his own way, you know, based off of the game story. It's not really a person. Uh, it's the same argument like saying it's just a fetus, it's just a doll. It's the same arguments and she's like, yeah, but look at it, look at its worth. It's the same thing that the, the, uh, the, the pro-life people say, look, it's got fingers and toes. You know, it's the same thing. This is really wild. I'm like, I don't know what to make of it. <laughs> it's like, oh my gosh. But they're crying. Senna gently embraced the baby. She had such a tender and loving expression on her face. I couldn't believe she was the same ill-tempered girl from before. That's wholesome. Also, we don't really know if it's a baby though, right? They haven't, like, opened the thing up to look- Oh wait, no, I can see the top of its head, I just noticed that! Wait, so is it- uh, can they actually look at it? Is it really a baby? <laughs> Okay, so it's either it's a delusion or it's a real baby, then I thought maybe it would be like, what if it's just like a cell phone in there type of a deal, you know, wrapped up in something so that it just looked like a baby, right? But okay, all right. The baby. They're crying, Nishijo. She was a total mess. Had Senna been just a complete freaking schizo all along? Dude, you're freaking insane, bro. Freaking, what the frick, bro? <laughs> Talk of me, dude, freaking... I'm not... Never mind. We're just gonna move on. We have to de destroy the activated Noah 2 with the cheat code. If we don't, then we can't b bring your family back. Why are you he hesitating now? Because... They're alive. Dude. Oh, so wholesome. I can't kill them. I can't. Well then, how about I lend a hand? Dude, I knew it! I told you Senna was gonna show up! Oh my gosh! I freaking knew it! Huh? <gasps> ah! A thunderous roar. Unsure of what had just happened, I reflexively crouched down. No! You freaking jerk! You're in every ending, and you always make me mad! Why? Staying like that, I took a look around me, 
and spotted a single silhouette standing outside the Fukutoshin line ticket gate. They were gripping something that looked like a gun, and they were pointing it in our direction. He got Senna, didn't he? Senna croaked, and when I looked over at her, I saw her hands covered in blood. But it wasn't hers. It was coming from the baby she was cradling. The white towel the baby was wrapped up in was turning crimson. No! Oh, no! No! Oh my gosh, why? He's unredeemable, dude. They... They just, they made him, they wanted me to, they wanted me to hate Sua so bad. Bro, they made him kill Bon. They made him freaking, like, torment people. They made him kill a baby. Talk about heavy-handed. Dude, they wanted me to freaking, they wanted there to be no remorse in my heart for this guy, dude. They wanted it so bad. Oh my gosh, no. Dead. It happened again. I couldn't do anything. Senna's entire body trembled violently. Wow, we! My awesome shooting skills never let me down. This freaking guy. The man continued to walk toward us with the most casual smile on his face. On his back. The man wore a rucksack that clashed heavily with his suit. What are you two talking about down here? Oh, and while I'm thinking of it, what was up with that baby? Wait, don't tell me. Was that your secret love child? Did you two do it? Man, high schoolers these days. But, meh, none of that really matters. I came to take care of you two. If we let you two brats near Noah too, he'd start causing an awful lot of trouble. Wait, so he's not part of them? Oh, dude, either this is the biggest freaking uh, psyop, freaking uh, freaking reverse psychology garbage going on, or 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 he's not with that committee of three hundred. What the frick? Wait, so you no know, or or no wait no or. Either that or, or no, maybe he... But no, he would have no reason to lie, all right? I mean, he's going to kill him, right? So he could just be like, I was the committee of 300. Like, he doesn't have to say, like, we can't let you, you know, near Noah too, Right? Like, I mean, that makes sense, doesn't it? I mean, so I, it wouldn't make sense for it to be the other... What the frick? I don't... So, so who are they then? Who is the committee? What the frick? Was he related to Nozomi? I felt like I'd seen him somewhere before. He was carrying a gun. Normal people didn't carry a gun. He was gonna kill us. We had to run. Well then, guess I'll start by taking care of the hyper-dangerous spree killer hiding in a high school girl's body. <gasps> the man raised his gun and pointed it directly at Senna but she didn't react at all. Still clutching the baby, she had broken down in sobs. No. What do I do? Protect her, dude. We've got the cheat code now. What the heck do I do? I should be invincible now. There's no way I can protect Senna. If I'm invincible, then I can be reckless and stupid and be perfectly fine. Oh, he did block the bullet, didn't he? Gah! Ni... Shicho? I had shielded Senna. A fierce pain exploded in my chest, followed by a burning heat that felt like I had caught on fire. My uniform was stained in blood. Dude, let's go! Saving the girl. I know you did it because you thought you were invincible and would never have done it if you didn't think you were invincible, but dang, at least you did something like, like manly for once. 
<laughs> protecting the woman and child. That's got to mean that's got to be like a, a metaphor somewhere in there, right? That's an analogy. There ain't no way. There ain't no way. The guy, the the guy protecting the 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 the, the woman and child, right? And he just said, "Is that your love child, right?" And all that stuff like that. There's they're they're going for something there. I just can't figure out what it is. But yo, let's go. He's probably gonna die because they lied and it wasn't really a cheat code and all that. But maybe not. Maybe I'll be wrong. Let's see if they prove me wrong. I'd been shot. Whoa, that was awesome, Nishicho Takamikun. Putting your life on the line to protect a chick. You really are a shining example for all us guys out there. But how much longer can you keep it up? Oh, frick. Each time a gunshot ripped through the air, another bullet opened a hole in my body. <coughs> my blood splattered everywhere. The pain eroded my nerves. Senna was still frozen in place, looking at me with tears in her eyes as she cradled the baby. Over half of the white towel was now covered in a deep shade of red. I could no longer tell if that blood was mine or the baby's. Yo, Senna, get your freaking D-sword out and freaking help out here, huh? Hello? Nishijo, you're... you're bleeding. If you don't stop, you'll... We'll use the ch cheat code. B but... What do I do? Oh. Oh. This wasn't good. I was gonna lose consciousness. It hurts. 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 I never asked to go through pain like this. With the cheat code, I should be invincible. But if Senna doesn't activate it, I'm gonna die. Dude, you just assumed you'd be invincible. They never said what the cheat code was. Did they? I don't think they did. I think they just said, we'll give you a cheat code, and then didn't expound upon what that meant. So, like, you just jumped to conclusions, just like you did when you saw the freaking Nanami freaking delusion in your head and ran up to that floor. Like, it's the same thing. I could feel him getting closer to me. I could sense a sinister bloodlust overflowing from him. Yo, we didn't, we didn't kill your girlfriend, dude. You can't be mad at us this time. Something cold and solid was pushing into my back. It felt like my wounds were being grilled over hot coals as that cold sensation clawed through them. At least I don't think so. I don't think that happened in Chapter 6. I think it happens in Chapter 8, which is technically what this is, so... <laughs> well, aren't you a trooper? But it ends here, with one point-blank bang to the heart. Pretty sure not even a gigalomaniac could survive that one. Senna, hurry! Wha uh, uh. Senna only continued to cry. This was it. After all that grinding to get the cheat code, none of it mattered in the end. Ew! Burn in hell, you little brat. The sensation on my back suddenly disappeared. I thought I'd just been shot, but it wasn't a gunshot that I'd heard. It was the sound of the air itself shaking. My... my arm! White feathers shimmered and danced through the air. But we were underground. There shouldn't have been any birds here. Despite my consciousness turning foggy and the pain ripping through my entire body, I slowly managed to turn around. And there I saw... <gasps> Demi! Oh! I almost forgot about you! The... 
me. Taku. Clasped in her hands was a sword so elegant, so beautiful, yet its form was unendingly sinister. I'd never seen anything like it. It was Demi. Demi, who had disappeared on me before, was here. She looked at me with a smile filled with sorrow. A large quantity of blood poured from the man's arm. Everything from the elbow down had been severed. The hand holding the gun rolled around on the ground. Had... Demi done that? Y Ew. Witch! My... My... Hand! How dare you! With all the horrible things you did to Nana-chan, this is nothing. The... Me... Demi avoided my dumbfounded gaze. She simply stood in front of the man, shielding us. Get out of here. Now. I've got the gist of what's going on. Aoi-san! Taku! Destroy Noah too! That sharp voice brought me back to my senses. But when I tried to move my body, even just a little bit, I was tortured by unrelenting pain. I wanted to collapse on the spot. I didn't want to move. I didn't want to think. But most of all, I didn't want to die. My consciousness was fading. I was fully aware of the blood flowing out of the wounds covering my entire body. Despair and fear of death threatened to overwhelm me, but I fought them back and held onto Senna's shoulders. Let's go. Well, we s still can. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mishicho. You shielded me. <laughs> and now you're. <laughs> Senna's eyes were clouded with tears. It was the first time I'd ever seen her crying face. I guess even level headed women like Senna cried sometimes. I noticed something else as I held her shoulders. Her body was incredibly frail. I was sure that wasn't unique to Senna. It probably applied to all IRL girls, really. Her body was slender as well, something guys also didn't share. On a normal day, she exuded an aura of confidence, arrogance, and so much overwhelming vigor, it felt like she could crush me with it. But at the end of the day, she really was still a girl. It'd be alright. Don't cry, Senna. If we just use the cheat code, it'll heal all these wounds in an instant. It has to. Believing that, I gripped my teeth and walked forward. Yo? Behind me. I heard the sound of a strange mechanical sound and a shrieking resonance entangling with one another. But I refused to look back anymore. Wait! Was that the porter? Was that a porter box or something? What? Huh? What the frick? Wait! You can't just move away, uh, move on from there? Was, was the baby actually a porter box? <laughs> I don't know anymore, dude. I don't know anymore. Did Senna just freaking make a delusion for Demi? I don't know. I don't even know anymore. We made it above ground. A trail of blood marked the path we walked. I'd lost a lot of blood. The intense heat I'd been feeling in my wounds had been replaced with an unbearable chill. No matter how much I tried to keep it under control, my body kept violently shivering. My teeth wouldn't stop chattering. Looking up, I saw the planetarium standing before us, but the moment I did, I realized something was off. The surrounding buildings had almost entirely collapsed, 
and the ones that were still standing were covered in cracks and fissures. And yet, the planetarium was completely intact. Not only that, but I thought the building was supposed to have been demolished years ago. You didn't think about that a long time ago? But it still stood tall in front of me. Why? Why hadn't I realized this until now? Why hadn't I questioned it earlier? Yeah, why? Was this because of some Gigalomaniac's powers? Or was it Noah Two's doing? At any rate, the reason I noticed must have been because of the cheat code. Dude, you're still on that cheat code thing. It's not real, bro! Now we just needed to activate it. And then we should be able to destroy the planetarium. Without me supporting her any longer, Senna fell to her knees. She was still heartbroken. Senna... Use... The cheat... Even talking was agonizing now. Senna looked back and forth between me and the baby, making her look like she was shaking her head no. But all she did besides that was tremble. Oh, she still has the baby? Oh, okay. Hey. I was running out of time. My vision was going blurry. If we didn't activate the cheat code, I was gonna die. Nishijo! Just hold on. This... I can't... Don't die. I'm begging you. Hey. Nishicho. The world... The world isn't an electronic device. I just... Convinced myself that it was. Yeah, there you go. I mean, now you're heading toward the right... the right mindset. Let's go. I couldn't save my mother and sister. And because of that, I couldn't forgive myself. I couldn't forgive myself for feeling sick and for vomiting. I couldn't... I didn't want to believe they died. Or that dad did it. I wanted to get rid of... all of my emotions. Forever. But I couldn't. I felt nothing but hatred toward dad. And I felt nothing but sadness toward mom and my sister's deaths. I couldn't forgive myself. I don't want to let this baby die. Dang it. I couldn't rely on Senna anymore. I had to do it on my own, somehow. Yo, what is happening, dude? This is wild. I reached out my hand to the blood-stained baby Senna was cradling. Give it to me. But Senna refused to let go. <laughs> you can't, Nishijo! Stop! It... It's... It's already dead. Taking charge, I wrestled Senna's hands away as she looked at me in horror and forcefully grabbed the baby. She broke down crying. Ignoring her wails, I clutched the baby. Cheat code. Activate. Lend me your power. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, his sword, huh? Huh? Is he gonna, like, replace his body parts like he did in the first freaking ending? Suddenly. I noticed it, a strange color, surrounded in faint light. Okay. A shining sword was laying at my feet. A D-sword! Forgetting all about the pain, I took hold of it. Oh, man! 
Oh dang! He done did it again. Despite being so long and gigantic, it was shockingly light. It was almost like I was holding nothing but thin air. Hey, this music again, let's go! I now knew for sure this was a real D sword. It was no fake. Holy crap, cheat code! To think I finally got my hands on a D sword this easily after struggling to get one for so long. Summoning all my remaining energy, I stood up. My wounds hadn't healed, but I was invincible now. Wounds this bad just took a minute to heal, that's all. Senna was utterly useless now. I'd destroy Noah too myself. I felt power overflowing from deep within, from the very core of my body. It felt like there wasn't anything I couldn't do. I had obtained power rivaling that of God himself. I brandished my sword. My target was the planetarium, illuminated ominously by the surrounding light. I'll destroy you! This is the end! Oh! A gunshot echoed throughout the air. Blood spewed from my chest. Did he make it? Did he kill Devi? What the frick? Did he really give her a delusion with the whirring sound? No freaking way. How is he still moving with a freaking chopped off arm? He should be bleeding out, not made it out of the subway type of wound. What the frick? Soon after, I was hit with an intense pain. For a moment, I stopped breathing. My vision went black. I had an awful feeling writhing in the depths of my throat, and the taste of blood spread through my mouth as I coughed violently. Uh, uh, that guy from earlier. Had he shot me again? Had Bimi failed to hold him off? No, she shot him, didn't she? I looked around, only to be absolutely astonished by what I saw. There were tons of people, all crowded around me and Senna. They all had dead eyes. They all were holding guns. And they were all aimed at me. Oh, the, yeah, because... No, it too protects itself. I almost forgot about that. Oh, no. Every single one of them was whispering something. May the divine light save us. 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 Senna, get down! They all fired in unison. Countless lead bullets penetrated my body, boring out my flesh, slicing through my bones. I was assaulted by impact after impact. My body danced around by an order not my own. Just like a marionette. The pain stabbed at my consciousness. It felt like I was going to pass out. Even still, I desperately kept standing. My D-sword was still raised high, held aloft in one of my hands. Yeah, how are you still standing, I think is the question. I'll destroy it. I prayed. I'll destroy Noah too. No matter how desecrated my body is, I won't die. I can't die. <laughs> I swung down. Oh! The D sword drew a trail of red light. A brilliant flash burst into the night sky. The blade of light tore through the endless night and descended down upon the planetarium dome below. Yeah, let's go. Only to be deflected by some unseen force. No! N no way. 
It was like there had been some sort of invisible wall. The light emitted by the D-sword was reflected, refracted, and dispersed. Silence. Senna, me, and the people who had been shouting at me. We all simply stared, dumbfounded. Even with the cheat code, it didn't work? Was Noah too indestructible? I'd try again. I couldn't let it end like this. I coughed up blood. Greasy sweat stung at my eyes. I could barely feel the pain anymore. My senses were already starting to disappear. My nerves might have been paralyzed. One more swing. I'm strong. I'm the strongest in the world. My strength stat should be so high, it should be absolutely OP. So I just need one more swing. I raised my sword overhead. May, May the, the divine, divine light save us! Along with a woman's scream, they fired wildly once again. Nishijo! Senna covered my body with hers. I guess Senna had saved me this time. Oh no! <laughs> Senna? I... I'll help too. I'll help you. Senna tightly, ever so tightly, embraced my blood-soaked body. She grasped the hand I held my D-sword with. Senna's body was so warm. Heck, it was closer to hot. It had to be the heat of her blood, drawn out by the gunshot wounds she'd suffered just now. The heat of the pulse of life that ran through her body. Hey, yo! What an image! Your resolve. I understand it. Now. Let's destroy it. For the baby, too. Yo, what's up with the baby? She like, like, she, she's so into the baby. It's gotta mean something. I, I, I don't know if it's just because her sister was a baby. I don't know. But that's so cute. Let's destroy it. The two of us. With our power combined. I won't let you... Die. I won't let you... Do anything rash. You and I... Our fates are intertwined. We'll always... Be together. When we die, when we fight, we'll always be together. Let's break this chain of misery already. Who cares about bringing back the dead? We shouldn't go against the natural order of things. I... I just... I don't want to see any hatred or sorrow anymore. I don't want to see the world like this. I don't want to see you hurt. So... <sighs> Let's destroy it. Together. The source of everything. Senna's voice rang throughout my fading consciousness. So she had finally come back to her senses, huh? Completely exhausted and covered in tears, she shielded an otaku freak like me. And now, she was covered in blood. We were both dyed a deep crimson. But I really did feel her passion. Her voice really did reach me. Let's go! Whoa! 
Ayo! Together, we raised the D-sword high. We could still hear gunshots firing around us, but that wouldn't stop us anymore. My body was overflowing more than ever before. I felt a strong life force gushing out of Senna. With this godly power, we would destroy the machine that rivaled God on high. This time for sure, we would... Let's do it! No, Nishijo! I nodded. Together, with Senna. Whoa! We swung the D-sword down with all of our strength. And right as we did, a flash of light burst forth. A flash of light that tore the very world asunder. A red light that ripped the night sky in two. A red blade that perhaps might even reach the moon. It blew away everything, turning it all to dust. Together with the invisible barrier surrounding Noah too, the planetarium was reduced to ashes. A massive impact and shockwave burst through the city. It felt like my body was going to be torn apart. The people standing around us were blown away. Even so, Senna and I held each other upright. We both clutched the baby in our arms, shielding it. We'd use every last drop of power we had left. We didn't think about what came next. As long as we had the cheat code, our wounds would heal. So right now, all we needed to do was destroy Noah too. With all our heart and soul, we let our power erupt. Huh? The sounds dissipated, and the light along with it. And in the center of that ruined city of death, Senna and I stood tall. Senna clung to my body. I leaned against hers, and between us, we embraced the bloody baby. I couldn't walk another step. I couldn't make the slightest movement. I didn't have an ounce of strength left. It's okay now. It hurts, but it's okay now. Bringing the dead back to life is just egocentric. Let's return the cheat code. I felt the same way. And because we were alive, we had to live on for the sake of those who had died. I'm sorry. Senna softly and gently embraced the bloody baby. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry for letting you die. Senna had cried a lot today, but compared to the usual girl who glared at everyone and everything, the girl whose weakness was on display right now, was far more beautiful. Senna's flowing tears were so very beautiful. As those thoughts flowed through my mind, I looked up toward the night sky. What? Really? That's how it ends? Wait, so the baby died, but they didn't from getting shot to oblivion? They said, let's return the cheat code. What does the cheat code mean then? Is that supposed to be like a metaphor for like a miracle from God since they're supposed to be God, the committee of 300 or whatever? So they're saying we don't deserve a miracle, bringing back the dead is egocentric? I mean, it's not egocentric, I mean, because Jesus told us to do that. You know, he, he said he told the disciples, go out and raise the dead and heal the sick and, and, and cast out demons and 
you know, all that stuff, so. But, like, what were they trying to say here? I don't even know, man. Dude, that baby element, like, like upgraded this ending a lot for me. Uh, I really liked this one. It's really, for me right now, it's a tie between this one and Kozaways, because I really liked Kozaways as well. Um, so I'm not sure which one I like better. I like them kind of both for different reasons. I like that we got to see this, like, really wholesome side to Senna. It was, like, that was kind of cool. Um, yeah, and seeing her with her dad and all that, and uh, I'm just trying to understand. We They gave us a glimpse of what the Committee of 300 is, but we still don't really know, you know? All we know is that they stopped Hatano from stopping them. So, obviously, it seems as though we shouldn't destroy Noah 2. Like, that'd be a bad thing to do, because probably we don't want, you know... Well, but I don't know. It's, again, it's like, it depends on who the committee is. So maybe they are good? I doubt it, though. I doubt it. But they, they didn't seem to be freaking, um... They didn't seem to be Sua. Sua was was part of Nozomi, and Nozomi apparently wasn't part of whatever the Committee of 300 was, because they're outside of our realm or whatever, so... Bro, that was just a mind screw. I, I can't even really make sense of it still, or yet, or any of that, so... Dang, I don't know, man. I don't really know... I don't know how to feel. I, it's it's too it's too vague, you know? It's too abstract for me to fully get it. I can tell they were trying to do something, though. It was like a family dynamic they were doing right there at the end, so... Especially, too, with Senna, it's kind of poetic to do that with her because her whole story is about her family and whatnot, right? You know, her dad and mom and sister and all that, so... Kind of makes sense. Oh, huh? An after credit scene? What? Did, I guess the other ones had one, didn't they? I, I guess I did, wasn't expecting that. I was expecting it to go to the main menu. Okay. I'm happy to report that all errors have been eliminated. I've confirmed the disposal of Noah 2 and Norose Genichi. The original Nishijo Takami has been secured, although he's definitely knocking on Heaven's door. Just as planned, after completing their mission... Both the copy of Nishijo Takami, as well as Hatano Sena, died. Oh, they did die. Okay. We'll continue our investigations, but neither Hatano Sena nor Nishijo Takami are likely to have caused any errors. And isn't that just the bee's knees? Less work for me, after all. Wait. Who's that talking? I don't know who that is. What? That sounds like Sua, but it can't be. Huh? Oh, right. Before I forget. I decided to take a stroll around the premises. And while I was at it, I took it upon myself to take care of those Cosmic Church of the Divine Light followers as well. Unfortunately... It does seem that Sakihara Dimi was able to escape. Well, I can't see her posing any real threat to us anyhow. The schedule for the Worldwide Human Domestication Project is going to need a few slight adjustments. However, I believe that the series of errors that came from these events can be restored and put to future use in the project. As a result... The Committee of 300 hasn't suffered a single loss. Yes, understood. I'll put a stop to my debugging duties for now. So from this point forward, I'll go back to my role as a surveillant. A phone? <sighs> oh? The baby's still alive? So we do have an error on our hands, then. <gasps> no! Did those two give it life? <gasps> oh my gosh! Hmm. <sighs> I suppose I'll just pretend I didn't see it. I don't have a husband to help. And I'm not exactly wonderful with kids. Wait, is this a, this a woman? What the frick? What? Huh? How would I even get my hands on milk with Shibuya like this? What the frick, huh? 
Deus Ex Machina? Who the frick was that? Was that Momo Say or something? Or was it just some random- Wait, a husband, so... Wh wait, what did that mean? You're not gonna end it like that? Oh, man. Oh, frick, what the frick was that? Oh, what the heck? So it was, they were talking on a phone and they were apparently looking at them, but they gave the baby life. That's so freaking wholesome and cute, but also what the frick? Who was that talking? A woman? The only other woman we know is Momose. They did not make Momose evil, did they? No, that can't be right. That can't be. There's no one else it could be, though, could it, though? I, like, I don't think so. We never saw any other women, right? Oh, no. What the frick? I thought that was a guy. Oh, no. For a second, I thought maybe it was Sua, but I I was like, I don't, it doesn't make sense. But I thought, well, maybe we just got, like, freaking double baited or something, double bait and switched, but... What happened? I don't even know what to say. Oh, man. Other than that, like, this ending was pretty decent overall, I would say. It was pretty good. I liked it. I'd say it's a tie between this one and Kozaway, so... Um... Man. What the heck? Okay, well, I don't really have much more to say than that, I think, other than what I've already said up to this point, so... Uh, with that, thank you all so much for watching. And, uh, I guess we'll... We'll see you in the next, uh, freaking episode where we're going into, uh, Demi's ending. She's the next ending right before the final ending, so. Got one more, uh, alternative ending before we get to the, what I'm assuming is the true ending, so. Uh, yeah, anyway, with that, thank you all so much for watching, and I hope to see all of you ruffians in the next video. God bless and peace.